example 4.13 from our textbook, chapter 4, Mechanical Vibrations from Rao, 6th edition. So here we have a building that is modeled as a single degree of freedom system, undamped system. And we like to find the response of that frame subjected to the loading that is shown in the figure, which is a triangular pulse. For this problem, we will use two methods, the method of convolution integral and the method of superposition. The force can be written in terms of a piecewise function. The first part of the function will be a negative uh, linear function with slope x sub zero over t, and the second part of the function is equal to zero for t greater than t sub zero. Let me start by the method of convolution. We recall that the integral for the method of convolution is defined as the integral from 0 to t of ft minus tau ht tau dt tau or the integral from 0 to t f tau times ht minus tau. We can use either and we will get the same solution. And remember that h is the response for an impulse which is 1 so over m omega n sine of omega n t and this is for undamped systems. So let's find the solution for t greater than 0 and less than t sub 0. I will find the solution using the second form of that convolution integral. So my solution will be equals to the function in terms of tau which is the slope of that ramp times tau plus f sub zero and multiplied by one over m omega n sine of omega n t minus tau. Let it tau. I will solve the integral in two parts. The first part is the slope and I will Take it my negative tau, I put the constant outside my integral, and this tau for times sine omega n t, t minus tau the tau, and the second part is just the constant f sub zero divided by m omega n and the integral of sine omega n t minus tau the tau. To solve the first integral, I have, to use, I have to use integration by parts because it's the multiplication of two functions in terms of tau. Remember the integration by parts. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So what we name u, I will name u tau and dv sine of omega t minus tau. So if u is negative tau, then the u is negative delta tau. dv is sine of omega n t minus tau delta tau, then v is the integral, which is negative cosine of omega n t minus tau divided by the internal derivative which is negative omega n. Remember that I'm integrating respect to tau. That's where the negative comes from. So let me write, write that solution. The constant remains equal. And that first integral becomes two integrals. The first one is already integrated and just has to evaluate it and is negative tau times cosine omega n t minus tau divided by omega. That negative of the omega n can solve with the negative that is above that came from the integral of sine. Now I write the other integral, which is the integral from 0 to t cosine of omega n t minus tau d the tau divided by omega n. And remember that the du is negative d the tau. So, and the third integral is the integral of sine which is omega n, cosine of omega n, t minus tau, divided by omega n. All that negative two. This is also a negative value over here. And that has to be evaluated between zero and t. 
empty. If we do this evaluation of the limits and the second integral that we have not done, and I'm taking one omega n out, so I, let me write the results of applying the limits. Remember that cosine of t minus t will become zero, cosine of zero, which is one, and the second term is zero because I'm evaluating tau in zero. I am integrating this cosine of omega n t minus tau omega n, and then I have to evaluate those limits, and the last integral is m omega n, and again I have to in evaluate in t and in zero. The first terms give me cosine of zero, which is one, and the second term gave me cosine of t. And I still have to evaluate the second term, which at the end I still have a negative sign underneath, because that comes from the internal derivative. So let, when I evaluate that, I get the sine of t minus t is zero. That's cosine of zero, cosine of zero is zero, but then I got cosine of t. And the last term remains equal. And this will be my solution for the first interval of time, which is from zero to t sub zero. Now I have to do the second time interval, which is from t sub zero and beyond. So for all t greater than t sub zero. Since these integrals are the same because the functions are the same, however, what is different is the limits of integration. So I will write my integral right here with different limits of integration, but it's the same integral. So let me write it down. So my integral is from zero to t sub zero, and the function is the same. And I do not have to do any integral from t sub zero and beyond because the function is equal to zero. So I remind with exactly the same integral, but different limits of integration. So since it's the same integral, I will just copy what I had before. which is negative tau, cosine of omega n, t minus tau over omega n. And then I have the second integral. Since I still have not taken out the omega n, I will write sine of omega n, t minus tau, divided by omega n, and that is a square, omega n squared. And then I have the third term, which is m omega n cosine of omega n t minus tau divided by omega n. So let me evaluate all those. It's very similar work from what we did before, just that we are not evaluating from zero to t, but from zero to t sub zero. So the first term, I do have two terms for that one, is t sub zero cosine of omega n t minus t sub zero, and tau becomes zero, so that I don't have a second term, actually. The second evaluation is sine of omega n, t minus tau, minus, and then becomes positive, sine of omega t minus zero, so I have a second term. Then the last term is f sub zero divided by m omega n, cosine of omega n, t minus t sub zero, and cosine of omega n, T minus zero, which is cosine of omega t. So this is the response, but let's do a little bit of algebra and simplify this expression because there are some terms that are equal. This term is equal to this term if I multiply all those uh, the t sub zero that is also outside in the first term. So I'm going to cancel those terms out to get a simplified version of my solution. And let me write down the 
final solution, which is equal to zero. I will substitute m omega n squared by k, and then I have negative sine omega n t minus tau, or t minus t sub zero, sorry, over omega n, plus sine of omega n t of over omega n, minus f sub zero, again, m omega n squared is k, times cosine of omega n t. This is the solution for the response for t greater than t sub c. I will solve the same problem using superposition. Let me write down again my function because by superposition I have to convert this function in a summation of function which responses I know. So let me write here, this is the method of superposition. And my function will be equals to I can model this function as a negative RAM starting from the origin because that's a response that I know. But to make it equivalent that negative RAM, I have to shift it up. So how do I shift one ramp up to get the same that I have originally? This ramp has the same slope, x sub zero over t sub zero, but it starts at the origin. So what I will do is add a step function that will uprise every single point of my ramp an amount of f sub zero. So what I'm doing here is rising every single point of my ramp f sub zero to get the original ramp. But I still do not have the same function after t sub zero because after t sub zero I will have a ramp that still goes down. To cancel that ramp I will add another ramp positive with the same slope but starting at t sub c. That's what is called an offset ramp with the same slope, which is f sub zero over t sub c. This ramp, as I said, will cancel the function after t sub zero so that it becomes zero as the original function. So for t greater than zero, unless that t sub zero, my function then becomes a negative ramp of slope f sub zero over t sub zero plus a step function. And that is just equals to, since my ramp is a unit ramp is t, and my step function is a unit step function that is one. So that's the original function. So the response, we know the response of a ramp, and we know the response of a step function, which we call it e. So I'm going to go a little bit to my uh, formula sheet, just to recall those functions, g sub t and r sub t. And then let me go back to my solution, and I'm just going to plug up these formulas in my solution. We said that the capital R, or the solution for a ramp, is one over k, one t minus one over omega n sine of omega n t, and the solution for a step function is one minus cosine of omega n t. And this is the response for my first um, period of time, which is t greater than zero and less than t sub zero. For t greater than t sub zero, I can write now my function as exactly the same ramp, the step function, 
but now to have the function become zero, I have to add that offset ramp. And again, my response will be the response of a ramp, the response of a step function, and the response of a offset ramp. And again, I can copy actually the response that I had before and just add the offset ramp. Which is t minus t sub zero minus one over omega n sine of omega n t minus t sub zero. I'm going to do a little bit of algebra just to cancel some terms. And if we put all the independent terms together, that gives me f sub zero over t sub zero k. So the first term will be, actually I will put the negative sign inside the bracket, negative t plus t sub zero plus t minus t sub zero. And then all the terms that have sine or cosine together. Actually, let me put the sine together and the cosine in the second term. So to compare the both solutions that I got before as well. So that would be one of omega n sine of omega n, t minus t sub zero, and the term that has the cosine is f sub zero over k negative cosine of omega n p. So finally, if I cancel, you see that the first term all cancel out and get to zero. So let me write the final response. Which is f to zero over t over times k that multiply one of omega n sine of omega n t minus one of omega n sine of omega n t minus t sub zero. And I have a second term which is negative x to 0 over k cosine of omega n. And this is the response for t greater than t sub 0. So if we compare both solutions, we got exactly the same answer using um, either method.